Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford. And today I have Deidre Siriani. Siriani. Deidre. Trust me, I will butcher that name multiple times every time I say it, but it is Deidre, as I was so forcefully <laughs> and certainly made to pronounce. I will, <laughs> yeah, I'll continue to botch it. Deidre Siriani, Siriani is founder of Radically Aligned, uh, is a TEDx speaker, leadership coach, and spiritual guide that serves a community of impact-driven entrepreneurs, coaches, leaders, and visionaries on their journey of healing, integrating change, and making the biggest impact through their work. Obviously, that's probably straight from the about page, but I just thought that it summed up everything that you do about it as succinctly as possibly can be. And along those lines, I'll do, our, I'll do my best to keep it short, but please feel free to go as long as you feel is necessary. Let's, let's start at the beginning. What got you into coaching? Well, I, I really believe that whatever we do, whatever our purpose is, as, long, as, as, as far as like the vehicle of what our purpose is, often is like shown to us many times on our path. So when I was younger, I was naturally people's cheerleaders. <laughs> I was like, you can do this. You can do this. And I remember this one moment in time. If I think back to childhood, I, I had skip rope. Anytime I learned something new, everyone in my family need, needed to know about it and everyone needed to see it. Right. Uh -huh. So I remember this one time being like, yeah, I'm Tyler. So I'm calling my brothers I'm calling my parents. I'm like, look, look, look what I can do. And I was doing the skip rope and then I was going to do a, a cross. Right. Cause that's the cool thing to do. It's like, when you're, you know, 10 years old, or maybe I was younger and I was doing it, I was like, needed to show everyone. And I kept messing up, but I kept saying, wait, wait, that didn't count. That didn't count. Let me try again. So this energy of wait, wait, let me try again has been a big part of me being my own cheerleader from not necessarily having that growing up. And then also I've been that cheerleader for other people. And I've had the ability to see what their purpose is and the encouragement and potentially the clarity that they need to step forward and really go after what they want rather than what they think that they should do. So my past career, before stepping into coaching, I was running a yoga business. I had a lot of external validation saying this was the way for me to be because I was sponsored by a big company. I was on television and I was pretty good at it. Like I, I liked doing it, but I always felt like something was missing. I also always felt like I was playing small and that where I was wasn't quite it. I didn't feel like I was fully living in my capacity to make a change in the world. And I remember facilitating a retreat and this is with a tech company that was one of my clients. And I was teaching a lot of personal development. I was coaching and this other facilitator there who's very well known and very successful was like, you know, you're a coach, right? And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not a coach. I like, wasn't really like fully in my power. I wasn't living a radically aligned life yet. And over time I kept getting nudges. And then one day I just surrendered to it. And it took me, it took a lot of me letting go of the person that I thought I should be and stepping into what was m my most natural ability and gifts. And then I started my business about four and a half years ago. And I I love coaching and I love supporting people. So long story short, that's how I got into coaching. All the nudges from the universe. And I finally was like, okay, fine, I'm doing it. And then here I am. <laughs> that's that's perfect. You didn't so much become a coach as you realized you were a coach and then yeah. acted accordingly. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And then I was like, I'm a coach now. <laughs> the labels, right? Yeah. Aren't the right things so often a realization? Always. They yeah, always there's a decision are. to support that realization, but usually, almost in my experience, always, it's a realization that I then follow up with the right decisions finally. <laughs> yeah. I've really realized in my life and people that I've served, it's, it's more about just releasing the programming of who we think we are, think we should be, and allowing ourselves to just be who we actually are. And that's our journey of evolution in many ways. So yeah, absolutely. It sounds simple because it is simple. It's not easy, it but it is simple. <laughs> the beginning is not easy, but once you like slide into it, it's easy. It's like with anything where you're stepping deeper and deeper into truth, deeper and deeper into your true identity. It's like at first there's resistance because the mm -hmm. ego comes up, our personality comes up, who we always have been, who people think we are comes up. All of these like safety mechanisms come up and we avoid, we push down, we downplay our gifts. And then if we can just surrender to the discomfort of like, oh, okay, like I'm going to do this, even though 
maybe it doesn't look right from the outside looking in. Once you've come over that, you know, that resistance, that hump, that's where it's the path of least resistance. And I think a lot of people, when they hear path of least resistance, they think being lazy, but really it's the path of most resistance at the beginning is the path of least resistance. <laughs> it's just a matter of like most things, a matter of perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. And then taking action. Right. Exactly. Which I think will lead me very naturally into my next question. In your coaching business, what is it that you do or present or provide that you would say is unique? Well, I um, I've studied with shamans for over a decade. So I'm very connected to source energy, spirit. It's very much who I am. So I definitely infuse that into the work. I use a lot of different principle, universal principles, universal laws, and teachings that I've learned into more of the programs that I facilitate. But most importantly, what makes my work different and unique is I actually don't tell people what to do at all, ever. It's not a part of my system at all. So I have a framework that I support people through. I find out what they are wanting to work on, what's going on, what's in the way. And I actually have some really powerful ancient wisdom technology tools that helps my clients connect with their highest wisdom, their highest self in, you know, five minutes, sometimes less, sometimes 30 minutes that gets them into a state of oneness and unity consciousness where they can't bypass their true identity, and then they have the answer. And then I hold the container and the coaching to help them move that forward week to week when we work together. So I'm not a coach that tells you what to do. I actually bring you into processes where you, your highest self tells you what to do and what you need to know. And through that, I'm the facilitator of activating that within yourself and then giving you the framework to magnetize that and accelerate that in the, in the physical world. Now that you have that wisdom, what do we do with it? That's where the coaching comes in. So I never tell people what to do. They tell me what through these processes. And then I show them the way of getting there. I really like that. that the word that kept popping into my head right up until you said it was facilitation of uh, being a facilitator. And I like the magnetism aspect of it too, because you're basically, you're facilitating what will become a natural force and attraction as they, as they step into their, their true power and become radically aligned. That's, I like that. It's extremely powerful. Yeah. And so there's three parts. There's a three part framework. Actually, it's more than three parts to the work that I do. The logo of radically aligned, there's a triangle, there's kind of a flower in the middle, and then there's a circle. Hmm. The top of the triangle is truth, which really represents being radically honest with yourself on all levels, which is really self-actualization, really understanding who you are at your core and the deep healing work of trauma, which is one of the areas that I specialize in. The next one is love, living and leading from the heart until we actually wake up to who we are and who we're meant to be. And we release the trauma, the shame, the programming. We actually can't experience unconditional love. It's actually impossible. Everything's transactional, which is why so many people are unfulfilled and happy in life. So that brings us to unconditional love, potentially in partnership and also co-creation, the third part of the triangle is purpose and impact, which is until you really wake up, you may be questioning what your purpose is, or you may ask yourself the same question I was asking yourself, is this really it? And feeling like something's missing. The center of the logo is a flower, which is your unique expression. It's your unique soul expression, which is different. And it can't be duplicated. It can't be, you're not, you can't take it from someone else. So, so much of the illusions, discomfort, pain in the world comes from us trying to look at these frameworks on how other people are being and try to match that. And that's why we are unfulfilled. And sometimes you may even look at your life and be like, is this really my life? Like I have everything I think I should want. And I had that wake up call a decade ago and just being like, this isn't actually it. And then the circle that goes around the triangle and the flower in the middle is the wisdom that you gain every step of the journey and living and being an expression of that. And that is radical alignment. And there's many layers to it, but the, the basic framework. Of course. Yeah. That reminds me of one of my, one of my favorite quotes, which I will completely butcher right now, but Anais Nin, where it's something to the effect of I've reached a point where the pain of blossoming was less than the pain of remaining tight in the bud or tight in my oh. bud, something like that, where it's yeah. just, a, just a call towards uh, you reach a certain point of realization where you realize that to bloom is the best thing that you can do. And that's yeah. to stay away. You've, you mentioned earlier safety, thinking about what's <laughs> safe, how your ego will kind of come up and try to keep you on the safer path. And that that's not really always actually safe, is it? To stay all curled up and tight and away from your center. Well, that could be a whole other conversation. So if we go into the space of healing and you know my background in studying and doing more of the healing modalities and work, it's 
that's where we manifest disease in the body is from not actually listening to our soul. And so with some of the intuitive work, um, disease in the body, 90 about, I'm just throwing out a number. I believe it's like 98% of the time has to do with not listening to the soul. So when you can actually understand how your body is always communicating to you, which isn't what we've been trained as far as intuition on like the foundational stuff, you can actually understand exactly what your body and soul is telling you to act accordingly. And when you can do that, you can heal yourself of disease. I've done it. I had four autoimmune diseases, chronic pain, depression, anxiety attacks, allergic to most foods to none of that is a thing anymore because I've learned this blueprint. And this is what I help really integrate into people as like a part of their everyday life. Powerful. Very powerful. I'm, I'm only really just learning how to listen to my body in a much more literal way where it's like, you know, for so, for so often we're kind of taught that our body ourselves are kind of a black box. It just exists and you just kind of react to whatever comes, but I've been, been able to realize over the last few years, how much more power of attention and intention that I have in that regard, in my relationship to myself, to my body and to my whole self. It's just, yeah, it's, I'm just scratching the surface. I think of what you are in the midst of and bringing to the masses. I love this. I think I want to ask you one more question and it's essentially in last the last 12 months and the next 12 months how is your this this business this practice this mission this purpose how has it grown over the last 12 months and how will it be growing over the next 12 months I love this question because so about 12 months ago, you know, it's crazy. I thought today was a different day of the week because this is just how I am. So in the moment and in the day, I'm like, what day of the week is it? Is it the weekend? What about what's going on? But no, I'm, I'm serious. But really like when the, when everything, when the pandemic hit, I was traveling around the world, living out of a suitcase, working on taking one of my signature events to different cities around the world. I was making partnerships. So that's where I was, I guess, you know, year and a half ish ago, I, you know, I'm timelines are a little bit off, but that's what I was doing. And then everything hit, everything shifted. I came back to Canada and I asked myself, okay, now that I can't do these big live events with hundreds of people, how am I going to be able to give this magic, this medicine, this transmission, this awakening shift to more people. And so what I did was I, I still have the event. It's a three-day event that I run a few times a year, but it's online. And so I turned that into an online program an online experience. And then I took it and I asked myself, okay, my one-to-one coaching is it's a bigger investment because I get people really fast results that are permanent. So I'm like, how do I support more people who aren't necessarily ready to work with me one-on-one? How do I bring that to more people? And I turned my old kind of coaching. And I don't mean outdated. I mean like the old framework of my coaching, all of the problems that most people come to me. And I created a, an eight week program to support many people. So I have my signature event, my signature program that helps people actually embody and has the transition. A lot of it's live. And then I also have a certification program for transformational leaders and coaches so that they can have the same tools and wisdom that I use in my, in my coaching to really make a bigger impact, whether they're a teacher, a coach, a facilitator, whatever it is they do. And then I also developed a mastermind to support those who are impact driven entrepreneurs who want to make a bigger impact in the world and have the right tools, the right support, the right mentorship the right momentum and group of people who are visionaries leaders too, who want to create a successful online business. So I built all that in the last year and a half. And I've had uh, about, I've had about 70 people go through my signature program. I've ran it a few times and and it's very much been like, you know, how it's been going has been very well. I've had my signature event. I have my mastermind going. I've had my uh, certification program. It's all been awesome. The results have been off the chart. And so this next year, what I'm stepping more into is I'm taking what I've already built and I'm amplifying it. And so as far as like, I know we're talking a little bit about business, you work with coaches and people. So, you know, what that's going to look like is more joint ventures being on more stages. And also I'm writing a book that supports my signature um, program that's called Turn Your Light On. And it's awaken your inner alchemist, heal your past and, or no, heal your past trauma and awaken to your greatest gifts. I think that's kind of what what we've decided on. And so I'm like, how do I amplify what I'm doing? How do I get my message out there to more people? So there's that. And then I'm also stepping more into the space of 
working with men on relationship and business, because there's a lot of men and, and I just love working with men. I work with men, women, all, all genders, all identifications, but what I really do feel called is to support men because I feel like there's so many men who have imprints and trauma that says they have to be successful. They have to do all of these things in order to be happy. And they've created businesses and lives and, 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 and all of these things, but they're missing love. They haven't been able to manifest and keep the woman they love. So I'm creating a new program specifically for men and a few other projects in the back and on, you know, on the side that I can't talk about yet, but amplifying what I've built, making it bigger, streamlining it more, and then also bringing that new project underway and doing a lot of like, you know, contributing in different magazines and platforms. So that's how I'm going to amplify my message this year. That is perfect. That is lovely. It's, it's, it sounds to me like you have, you didn't just rest in what you had built so far. You immediately looked for how do I, and again, that word amplify, that's a word that was in my head until you used it. And I was like, cause I was, if you didn't say it, I was going to have to, it's exactly <laughs> what you're it. doing. You're, you're amplifying the, the tone and the volume of what you have to offer so that it gets mm -hmm. to, it doesn't just get in front of more people. It doesn't just get visibility. It actually gets a strong impression. It actually hits a little bit deeper, you know, and that's a lot of people will think of that amplification of just more, more, right. being more places, more times louder, not necessarily. It's more than just that. It's about reaching people where they're at in the right place at the right time with the right message to bring them in. And then you have so much more to do. Absolutely. And just to add one more piece around identity and branding and being a coach, like we are as coaches, as facilitators, as leaders, as transmitters, whatever it is that you do, your brand you can brand yourself however you want, but it's really an expression of who you are. So it's about being radically aligned with who you are and that congruency through everything. And so for me, it's like quality over quantity, depth over sparkles or finesse because no one's perfect. And I'd rather bring a really deep experience and maybe like, you know, like it's not about the gloss. It's about real transformation. That's permanent. That's changing people's lives. That's what I care about. Yeah. Genuine is better than perfect. Genuine is perfect. And there we go. <laughs> there doesn't exist, you know? So that's what I'm all about. Well, I could do this all day, but I feel like we should bring this to a close. We've been going for 20 minutes already. Deidre, thank you so much for being on Coffee with Coaches. Big thanks to everyone who's listening and watching, and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks for having me. Bye.